perhaps the most common uh, form of bias used in the transistor circuit is voltage divider bias. So here we see a simple example. An AC signal is coupled in and coupled out. So nothing either after or before the circuit affects any of the DC voltages. So how do we go about analyzing the circuit and finding out where the Q point is? Well, uh, the easiest thing to do is to start off by making some uh, assumptions that are going to really help us out a lot, simplify the analysis. So we're going to assume, first of all, that IB, the base current, is approximately zero. Now the reason why that's very nice is that that means we can essentially disconnect the transistor from the circuit and we can find the voltage at the base very easily. So therefore, voltage at the base is simply equal to VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2. Since we know the voltage at the base, it's relatively easy to find the voltage at the emitter. Voltage at the emitter is equal to voltage at the base, which you've already figured out, minus VBE, which is about 0.7 volts. Now, since we know the voltage at the base, we can now find the current. Sorry, we know the voltage emitter, we find the current at the emitter, and that's simply equal to voltage at the emitter divided by the emitter resistor. And because we made this assumption IB is equal to zero, we can say as a consequence of that, IE is approximately equal to IC. So that means that the collector current in here is really the same as the emitter current over here. So since we know the currents in both of these, and we know the resistance, we can find the voltage drop across them. In other words, we can find the voltage drop across this transistor by using Kirchhoff's voltage law. So therefore, the voltage collector to emitter of the transistor is equal to VCC minus the drop across RC and minus the drop across RC. And so that will be simply IC or IE times RC plus RE. And there we have all the basic formulas which describe the operating characteristics of this transistor. Now notice uh, we did start off with an assumption. The assumption was that the base current is equal to zero. And um, that's not really entirely true, of course, otherwise a transistor of this type would not work. So there are some things which you can do to make a better estimate. So to make a better estimate, we can include the impedance into the base of the transistor. That's to say, looking into this, we don't actually see an open circuit where there's no current flowing. What we actually see is an impedance looking in, Z base. Now, that Z base we've already calculated from a previous uh, example, but we should remember that uh, ZB is approximately equal to beta times RE. So now what we can do is we could calculate a new value for this voltage at this point because we have a different voltage divider. So you can either thevenize the voltage and thevenize the resistances, drawing something that looks like this, and make uh, new calculations as to what the uh, emitter current is. Or what you can do is simply use this impedance to calculate a new voltage and proceed with the analysis as before. So it really depends on the degree of accuracy one needs. In the final event, if you're going to have to make a circuit, which is exactly precise, of course, you're going to be making using a computer model simulator, in which case uh, there will be an awful lot more characteristics which would have been taken into account in the simple ones that we've mentioned here.